Mushroom spores. Things that are here and gone as quick as a flash, it seems. But that said, what if we can not only make them last, but also use them in ways that can leave us aghast? Let's talk the best aspects of mushrooms while barely talking about mushrooms, everyone. For you see, it is not mushrooms that are spawning mushroom spores, but rather their corresponding mush trees instead. Blue mush trees will begin to bloom come winter, meaning this season will likely be your first encounter with these things. But come summertime, red mush trees will produce red mushroom spores, and please start to bear in mind just how quickly these things spoil over time. And lastly, green spores shoot out of blooming green mush trees come spring, and as you can see, we can indeed capture these things with bug nets. But hold up, beard, what about lunar mushroom spores? Well, what about them I ask right back, as it's not like we can capture them and thus use them in any way, so all they're getting is a mention. Oh, and a warning I suppose, about how both lunar mush trees and mush gnomes can spawn these things and cause issues for us if we happen to be nearby a lunar mushroom spores explosion. So let us return to our regularly scheduled program here, as we're not quite done talking the sources of shroom spores. Not when fun caps are still a thing, everyone. All fun caps, be them blue, red, or green, cost six of their respective mushrooms to create, and all will produce a corresponding mushroom spore every minute or so. Now obviously, mush trees are way more efficient, but if you do want a cap, you have got two options. Toadstool here, who also just so happens to drop several mushroom spores upon death, but who the heck is gonna kill Toadstool for those? Or Claws is Loot Stash here, both of which, again, are no match for blooming mush trees. Still, you will get a guaranteed fun cap per Toadstool kill, so that's kinda nice. Just expect a 33% chance per different color. But before we get to how to use mushroom spores, one last segment on their spoilage timers and storage potential. Outside of our inventories, they die out in roughly 90 seconds, sometimes even less. In our inventories or a chest, we can have them for 15 days potentially if caught fast enough, but note that ice boxes are off limits here. Snow Chester though is it, so there you go. But yes, why should we care about mushroom spores you ask? Easy. Mass mushrooms. Craft yourself a few mushroom planters here, and proceed to place whatever spores you want within them, something I imagine some folk didn't even know you could do, and might I add, you should probably prefer blue and greens over reds, and wait out a mushroom planter's growth cycle of about four days, and you will notice that while typical planters will give us four shrooms per harvest, planters filled with spores will not only up that to six shrooms, but have a 50% chance to spit out yet another corresponding mushroom spore. Oh yes, they're very good. Pretty cool looking too. So shroom it up. But that's not all folks. Mushroom spores are also needed to craft additional pieces of corresponding fungal turf via the terra firma tamper and lichen if you wish. However, believe it or not, our final discussion of the day is gonna center around lights. Mushroom spores have great impact on mush lights and vice versa actually. And when it comes to glow caps specifically, the devil is in the details. If you want a certain color, follow these recipes. Now unfortunately, the colored light in this game isn't always that grand, but do note how both mush lights and glow caps will significantly slow the spoil rates of anything in them, including spores. But hold up, beard, how do we even get these lights in the first place? Yup, you guessed it, Toadstool and Claws once again. Toadstool drops the mush light often, but the glow cap only 33% of the time. And Claws' loot is kind of up in the air as well, because we can get a lot of other things before we get the thing we actually need, if you know what I mean. Either way, good luck. But hold up times too, as we're not done quite yet. For you see, the Enlightened Crown, dropped via a defeated Celestial Champion, now has a relationship with Mushroom Spores. Heck, it literally has five built-in slots for Mushroom Spores specifically. Inserting some spores will stop their spoilage entirely, but will also change the colors of the crown itself and the light it provides if our sanity is high enough. Well, kind of, because again, color light in this game is pretty bad. 
But to continue, deconstructing a crown into shards means each individual shard can now hold a spore and thus change colors and or provide colored lights. But lastly, these shards can also then be placed in the mush light slash glow caps to maximize their light instantly, mind you, change their colors of course, and yes, stop the spoilage of anything that is then put in them, even if they're not a spore. It's pretty neat, all spawning from things that despawn in 90 flippin' seconds. And there you have it everyone, an admittedly random guide on mushroom spores within Don't Stop Together that may have surprised you just given how far reaching these otherwise ignored spores are. For some reason I woke up thinking about mushrooms in this game, which led to this video, so I hope you did indeed learn something new here today. Thanks for watching, folks. Well, wish the wall, shroom, shroom, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.